Welcome back to my channel. I am Ozzy Angrish with EXT Realty, and I am here representing you as your Maryland real estate agent. So today we're discussing the Maryland's buyer agreement and the Maryland's buyer package that, ha um, that I present to you via Zoom call, through phone call, or in person so that you can understand uh, what it is uh, to have a buyer's agent represent you in the state of Maryland. So don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can find me on my Instagram channel at Oz the Realtor and on Facebook at Homes by Ozzy. So today we'll go over a few forms that I present to you in our buyer's consultation and meeting so that you can have an understand, um, so you can have an understanding and you can be uh, more comfortable hiring me as your real estate agent in the state of Maryland. So let's see. Okay, so let's scroll to the top of this. So here you will see the exclusive buyer tenant representative agreement. This is an agreement that I will uh, present to you uh, when hiring me as your real estate agent. Do understand that you should, and I encourage you to hire more than or interview more than one real estate agent so you can kind of have an idea what to expect from that agent and then make a choice and be and serious about that choice um, so that we don't waste your time and you don't waste our time. So in this buyer agent tenancy representation agreement, uh, here is the information. Here we have the date that we uh, met or maybe it's the date we met originally before the in-person meeting or the Zoom meeting or the call meeting to go over this buyer's packet. So if you have any questions during this meeting, I encourage you to ask me those questions so I can give you the answer on the spot to make sure that we that you have an understanding and that you are conf confident and that you are comfortable with this agreement. So here uh, it has the date here, the buyer's information here. We need your current address, phone numbers, cell phone numbers, and email. Here is my broker information, the contact number for my broker. Here we have my cell phone number there, my email list there. Uh, paragraph three talks about um, buyer authorization, what exactly as you as a buyer is um, looking to purchase, single family home, townhome, condos, all of the above, land, um, and we go into uh, those items. Paragraph four talks about the terms of this buyer agency agreement and the expiration expiration date. So hire me, let's just say you want to see a home. And before we go out and see a home, there's a few things that we need to have in place. And I want to make sure we have a buyer agency agreement in place and a pre-approval in place. Um, if you are renting, we just make sure we have this buyer agency agreement in place. You can, uh, we can date it for one day, one week, uh, one month, however long the duration is that you think it would take you um, to find a home or get, we would find the home of your choice. So the purpose of this to make sure that you're covered as a buyer, make sure my broker is covered as well, and that we have a uh, agreed upon relationship before we start showing you homes. Um, so this agreement goes through that and we can have any dates in here based on what me and you will agree to. And some of the things that I have here, if you decide that you wanna cancel this agreement, um, that you must uh, cancel this agreement within three days of, um, three days notice in writing and that there's a termination fee of $250. So it could be, uh, let's say it's been six months and you decide on month four, oh, I no longer want to hire you as my real estate agent. And in that time, we've been, I've been spending gas, taking time from my family, making sure that I prioritize your needs. So the purpose of this is to make sure I prioritize the time to make sure I take care of your needs. In order to make sure that we both are serious about this relationship, I want to protect your time and I want to protect my time. So this is like a loyalty agreement and that it just shows you the fee will cover this. These items here in this paragraph, um, when we continue to go here, talks to paragraph five talks about the buyer responsibilities. Paragraph six talks about the broker responsibilities, what I am to do on behalf of the broker to represent you um, as my client. And paragraph seven talks about compensation. This is the paragraph that everyone wants to talk about. Everyone wants to know up front. And this is something I would tell you as a buyer that is not 
your biggest concern. Your biggest concern, our biggest concern is finding your home that you're pre-approved for and making sure that home meets your need. That is our ultimate goal. Here, the conversation does matter. And this paragraph is important for you to know that the as your buyer agent, I'm using most of the time, I'm paid based on the MLS. And that is important why we have the MLS because we get updated information um, in the MLS, at the homes on the market, and it tells you up front, tells up front how much uh, the compensation would be to represent you. So our commission is already taken care of by the seller agent, um, the seller and their agent in the agreement that they have worked out. So this to hire us is free up front. And so this this covers compensation coming from the seller, the builder, or for sale by owner. So the for, for sale by owner can be kind of tricky, and I go over that with you more in detail in person during our meeting. It talks about if this agreement, um, here this paragraph talks about more the compensation that Mm -mm -mm. The days after the expiration of this agreement, if you find a lease or execute an agreement within 30 days, um, I should have read it to you. But yeah, so it's like a 30 day, um, let me just read it. During the term of this agreement or any extension there of buyer or any person or entity acting on buyer's behalf, execute a written agreement to purchase or lease any property through the efforts of anyone including the buyer in which event Within 72 hours thereof, shall furnish broke a copy of such, such written agreement if during the period of 30 days following the expiration termination of this agreement, buyer executes a lease or written agreement to purchase any property that buyer inspected may inquire about, negotiate, or purchase lease during the term of this agreement. Um, or extension thereof, in which event buyer with 72 hours thereof shall furnish broke a copy of such agreement. Um, so pretty much it just goes into the compensation and other things about the compensation here. In the event the lease is executed, compensation due to broker shall be paid as follows. And it goes to that paragraph, which I have, I don't have anything listed there. Um, so then we continue to go on and continue to talk about the fee paid by the seller in that paragraph B of paragraph seven. And then we have paragraph eight talks about disclaimer and limitations. Uh, paragraph nine. Um, talks about intra company agent representation. Paragraph 10 goes over the flood disclosure notice. Um, also, oh, well, most of that is the flood disclosure, and they have links there for you as a buyer um, to utilize, educate yourself. Um, have, you know, flood maps there. Paragraph 11 talks about repairs of the property. T paragraph 12 discusses legal construction. Um, paragraph th 13, um, in my buyer agreement, I include a consent to dual agency, and we will get into that document later. Here, um, you were signed as the buyer, and I was signed on the behalf of my broker. So that is the buyer agency agreement. Here we go to um, consumer notices to buyers or resident residential real estate in Maryland. And we are to include this with the exclusive buyer tenant representation agreement. So you will get a copy of this as well. Um, buyers of residential real estate in Maryland are advised to inquire about the following items. So you see the covenants, the deeds, the easement, leases, on-site sewage disposal, propane tank, home security system that record audio, solar panels, wire fraud through email, deposit held by escrow agent, smoke alarms. And you will also sign and date this as the buyer saying you receive this consumer notice. The next form we have is who represent who. This is not a contract. Um, so if we meet in person, you may see that highlighted, but I try to do it electronically. But this is not a contract. It just gives you the terms and definition of agent who represent who, what is a seller's agent, sub agent. And one thing I like to point out here, which is underlined, if you are viewing a property and you have not signed a broker agent agreement, which is the first document we went over in this present this uh, presentation today, that agent represent the seller. So let's say we go through this and you decide like, I really got to see this house. I need to see this house, but I don't want to sign that buyer's agent agreement. Do you mind taking me out? Um, I would take you out, but you have to sign this agreement and this notice. This is not a contract. It just said that when I take you out, as you just um, heard me read, I do not represent you as the buyer. I represent the seller. 
Um, so I can show you the home, let you go see the home and all of that. But because I'm not um, representing you as your agent, um, you would just have to sign this notice a one day, you know, just to go see that home for that day. So I like to point that out to my buyers. It goes into dual agency um, and what the definition of terms of that, of uh, those terms mean. Um, if any, it goes into it, if you or the seller do not agree to dual agency, this paragraph discussed that. Um, here you will have um, my information here um, saying that I represent you as the buyer, my firm name, EXP, um, and my name here, and then buyer's tenant. Um, down here below is, if you certify that on this date, uh, I made the required agency disclosure to you identify below and that you were un unable or unwilling to acknowledge receipt of a copy of this disclosure. And they're just saying, if you decide that um, you don't agree to this, that you just sign a date to hear um, of that disclosure, of this disclosure. The next one gets into uh, consent of dual agency, which I just discussed in the buyer agency agreement, which I have checked and highlighted that I would have attached to that so you can have an understanding of consent to dual agency. And then we get into what may occur under this, the important consideration before making a decision about dual agency. This paragraph um, is here as well. Your choices concerning dual agency, and we can discuss that one-on-one -on -one when we're in our meeting together. Um, your consent, your refusal. Here are duties of, of a dual agent and an intercompany agent, which is in the buyer agency agreement that we discussed in the beginning. Here, um, because it's in bold, I like to read, dual agents and intercompany agents must disclose material facts about a property to all parties. We can go over that in details. How dual agents are paid will be, we can discuss here, but that paragraph discuss it. Consent to dual agency here. Um, we would do the firm name, EXP Realty, and I represent seller buyer at this property. We use, I leave that blank until we find the property and we will have you sign, I will have you sign here. And this is the affirmation of prior consent to dual agency. Um, and then we put the property information there also. The next form we have in a buyer's package, if you hire me as your real estate, your Maryland real estate agent, here is affiliate business arrangement. This is something that um, we disclose. I disclose to my buyers that my company, EXP Realty, do have partner relationships uh, with other companies in that it, that's just what it is. It's... Um, uh, RESPA approved, so there's no violations in this, and it, it goes to two that is listed here, uh, which I introduce you to as well, is, which is an option to you. You do not have to use these companies. Uh, intro Lending First Class, which is a mortgage service provider, and then we have a title company here, Silver Line Title and Escrow Company here, and so it gets into the estimated charges and the ranges of the charges and the services that they provide. And then you acknowledge receipt of this disclosure that I did share this with you. We did discuss, we did talk about it. You have questions anytime throughout our journey as I represent you as an agent, please feel free to ask. Please feel comfortable asking. Um, I would do my best to get you the answer, you know, so please trust that I would do my best to get you an answer to your questions. And then the last document that we have in our buyer's agreement package is a wire and fraud advisory notice. And it just talks about cyber crime um, is a potential threat in real estate transactions. And if you get anything from me saying EXP need you to send money here, just know that my brokers do not hold money. So you will either have um, your title company and we can work that out who will hold the money for you uh, when you put your earnest money down and all these things and it goes through that maybe um escrow officer you know so we will go through that line by line and here in red i want to read please be advised that exp realty would never send via email wiring instruction related to your transaction as i said before because my brokerage do not hold money neither do i 
um, and it goes through uh, the disclosure here and what's been advised to you. It gives you a couple of websites, um, if something seems suspicious to you, uh, what to, uh, to report those sources. These are sources below where it can provide you information. Um, and then you, are, as my buyer client or my seller client, you assign and date it here. So those are how many? That was six documents that we will go through through our buyer's consultation, which if you would like to have a buyer's consultation with me, pick my brain, ask a few questions. My calendar, can, my calendar <laughs> invite to get on my schedule is below and I am available to you. And as I said before, hire me as a buyer agent is free to you. I'm, uh, most of the time I am paid through the seller's agent or through the seller's um, that way um you know negotiations tend to happen when it's a for sale by owner but all those things can be worked out our biggest goal is to make sure we can find you a home based on your pre-approval based on your criteria what you're looking for that is our ultimate goal to find you a home whether you're trying to downsize upsize first time home buyer you're looking for a multi uh, family complex because you're trying to make passive income, you're an investor, I have investor clients as well. And I want to let you know that I also am a commercial real estate agent as well. So uh, right now I do cover the Maryland area. So just let me know and we can connect. So if you have any questions, please comment below and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and follow me on my social media, uh, my YouTube page here, of course, um, Instagram, at Oz the Realtor, Facebook at Homes by Ozzy. I'm on Pinterest, I'm on Twitter, I'm on LinkedIn. And of course, um, you can always leave me a comment question through my Google page or Google business page as well. So I am available to you. Thank you so much for liking. Thank you so much for commenting. And thank you so much, uh, importantly, for taking the time out to watch this video. Thank you so much. Have a blessed and wonderful day.